when God as man descended unto us to erase the stain of sin and put an end to wrath. The entire world thrills with hope on this night that gives it a savior. My people, kneel down and await your deliverance. For Christ has come, the Redeemer is here. May the ardent light of our faith guide us all to the cradle of the infant. As in ancient times a brilliant star guided kings from the east, the King of Kings was born in a humble manger. He has broken every bond. The earth is free and heaven is open. He sees a brother where there was only a slave. His love unites those that iron had chained. Who will tell him of our gratitude? For all of us, he is born. For all of us, he suffers and dies. And for all of us, he lives again. My people, stand up. Sing of your deliverance. Shout for joy and sing praise to the Redeemer. This holy night, this night divine, come and praise his name forever. His power and glory evermore proclaim.
John 1 verses 1 through 18 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning Him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas. It's so nice to have you join us for our worship service. This year started ordinarily enough with many of us making plans for our families, businesses, work, school, trips, even our church activities. You know, our usual stuff. As January rolled in, a lot of us were back to the grind, so to speak. I don't think anybody expected 2020 to be a year like no other. January 12, Taal Volcano erupted. This was followed by the COVID-19 virus, typhoons, floods. These are events that shook us and made us afraid. I remember the words of a beloved pastor many years ago. He said, when we are shaken, what is unshakable will remain. That is true, isn't it? Despite our changing circumstances, our God is never changing, faithful and in control. What a comfort that truth brings. If anything, 2020 forced us to realize what is it that truly matters. Tonight, as we celebrate Christmas Eve, let us go back to what is unshakable. Let us remember what truly matters. Let us worship the Lord together. He is our anchor, our joy, and our peace.
Good evening, Jubilee, family and friends. Uh, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you tonight, and as we celebrate this Christmas Eve service, remembering your birth over 2,000 years ago, thank you, Lord, for your special light, that star that guided humble shepherds and wise learned magi to worship you in Bethlehem. Lord, you are the hope for the nations. You are the peace on earth. You are the joy to the world, and you are the love of God. Made flesh to be a baby, to be born, to Mary, virgin birth, and Joseph. Lord, we come to you to worship you tonight. And Lord, may your light shine in each of our hearts and our homes, that even during this time, very difficult year, for all of us, we can celebrate Christmas with our families. Lord, guide us as we continue to live our lives for you and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Say that you're my God. 
The world waits for a miracle. The heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. The child prays for peace on earth, and she's calling out from a sea of hurt. Oh, come, oh, come. Emmanuel And can you hear the angel singing Glory to the light of the world Glory to the light Drought breaks with the tears of a mother A baby's cry as the sounds of love come down Come down, Emmanuel For a little bit of hope Oh come, oh come Let me greet you Merry Christmas over and over again. This Christmas Eve has been a very special occasion for Jubilee Evangelical Church. We come as a family and not only worship God, but also enjoy the beautiful music, testimonies, scriptures, and just beautiful atmosphere of this Christmas season. Let me introduce to you now my family. I have a family of a wife and two children. My wife, Christine, and my daughters, Debbie and Denise. They're both uh, singers, including my wife, but unfortunately, we were not able to sing tonight. But 
last year. We were here also, also at the same occasion. So it's an honor for us to be back here again. I'd like to th thank you for inviting the Tika family once again. And I'd like to tell you how grateful I am, not only for my family, but more so, my grandfather and my grandmother. Both of them came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior when they were still uh, used to be in the Tanai province, and they both were very religious. But unfortunately, they did not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But my grandfather read the Bible and he gave his life to the Lord. His name is Eriberto and my grandmother is Claudia. Both of them gave their lives to the Lord and both of them were called to pastor this church of Tanai First Baptist Church. The building that you see there was built in the 1960s. And from there, all of the Tika family were born. My, fa my father and all my uncles were all called to pastor that church. So eight children had five boys and three girls. All the five became pastors. And you can see there right in the middle will be my father, Pio, and my mom, Yolanda or Yoli, and my brother and myself. Now, believe it or not, all the 15 boys, the third generation, including me and my brother, all became pastors. And now I have two nephews that are pastoring with their father. Can you believe that? That uh, only a few years ago, God has called us to also be in full-time ministry. And finally, I'd like to show you a picture of our entire family back in 1978. Can you imagine this picture? And you could probably guess where I am seated, right in the front row, about the third boy right there. That was me when I was six years old. I never thought that after 42 years, I will be with you right here celebrating this beautiful Christmas season. Now, you know, my, my age, we have to go to our preaching time. So this evening, I'd like to share with you a topic that is very close to my heart, Jesus the light of the world. We can find that text in the book of John chapter 8, verse 12, where it says, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that follows after me shall not walk in darkness, but will walk in light. Now we have to remember that at that, this moment, Jesus Christ had this trial because of men who brought this woman in adultery, and they said, we must cast stones on her. Now, Jesus Christ said, he who has not sinned, cast the first stone. You remember that story? No one dared cast that first stone. So Jesus Christ uh, stooped down, wrote on the sand, which nobody knows what that meant. And then everybody left. Then he told the woman, where are those people who condemned you? And the woman said, no one neither do I condemn you. And then he said, go and sin no more. That's in verse 11 of John chapter 8. Verse 12, Jesus said unto them again, I am the light of the world. You see, there are so many things around the world back in Jesus' time and even about our time where a lot of people who judge and condemn, a lot of people who don't feel loved just because of people who look down on them. That's the context when Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. Let me ask you this question. What happened to 2020? Remember last year where a lot of uh, people predicted that this year, 2020, will be that year of clear vision. Beautiful things go are going to happen a lot of good optimistic uh, concepts of life and living all over the world. But what happened to 2020? Looking back, we have to understand that 2020 really has been a devastation of so many lives, so many relationships, and so many plans. I'm sure you can connect with that because a lot of us could look back and say, you know what? This year has been very, very sad. Even in the Philippines only, we see that uh, first the Taal volcano erupted in January 2020. And then after the Taal volcano, what do we see? 
the pandemic in March of 2020. After just a few months, last month of November, we see the Typhoon Roli and Typhoon Ulysses destroying most of, uh, of Catanduanes and Cagayan Valley uh, in Cainta, in Marquina, in Rizal, Daraitan, Cuyabo, and uh, so many places, especially that town of Montalban, Rodriguez, Rizal. Thank you all for helping and uh, lending a hand of food and help to those who are so much in need. But we look back and say, so can we look at 2020 and say, thank God because He is the light? Of course. Those things that happen to us never affect God. God is still the light. So let me encourage you this evening as we spend this Christmas Eve service to look back and think on what has happened, not only with your businesses, your school, your jobs. A lot of people lost their jobs. But I want to bring to you three things about Jesus being the light of the world. Number one, this evening, remember that our families became closer. What, the past eight months or more, we see that we have been quarantined inside our homes, basically locked down inside our homes. We cannot move. How many of you left your home, you left your house just a few weeks ago, if not a few months ago? Most of us, if not all, were at home for at least six months. We would go out, but uh, we would have all the protocols with us. And up to this moment, we would have them. And we would not enjoy the fresh breeze of air just because of this pandemic, which is still very much present today. The good things have happened, though. Crime rates have gone low. But unfortunately, there were a lot of violence inside the home. A lot of things happened inside our home, and no one was exempted. Don't look at me and say, I'm sure you were exempted. No, we also had our battles inside our home. We had to discuss a lot of things with our girls. We had to really uh, uh, look at each other and really love one another in spite of what is happening because we were not used to this. We were used to leaving the house in the morning and kissing goodnight to our kids in the evening. But now we are all together, all in the same house all day and all night but look at that in the positive way what have you learned being your families being as close as they are right now haven't you learned that your children need you the most how about children didn't you see how you also need your parents we need each other and that's i think the reason why god allowed us our families to become closer for us to learn to love each other now that we have this pandemic. Remember, this will never happen again after 100 years. And Lord willing, we will all be in heaven during that time. So enjoy the most of your family inside the home. Our families became closer. Number two, not only that our families became closer, but your faith became stronger. What did this do to your faith? Did it make you pray more, read more, think about God more, listen more to the Lord dealing with you? You know, I know of a lot of people also that did not like what God did, that He allowed this to happen. A lot of people all around the world did not like this. But I think, according to some statistics, that there were more people who were drawn closer to God during this time of pandemic. Why? Because they knew that they could not do anything. Even presidents of big countries, strong countries, are almost giving up to this enemy, the pandemic of COVID-19. So this has improved our faith because our faith became stronger. We became closer to God in our prayers. We had the time to pray. We had the time to read the Bible and really meditate on it day and night. But not only that, I'd like to leave to you this evening a beautiful phrase. Because not only did this pandemic 
get, get made our families to be closer, our faith to be stronger. But finally, this also made our future brighter. Yes, our future became brighter because of this pandemic. You know why? Because now we think clear. Now we think straight and right because now we think that only God knows our future. Read what Mr. Zig Ziglar, the very popular writer of this book said. It's a very important quote that he said, difficult roads lead to beautiful destinations. Isn't that true? That the, this difficult road of 2020 that we were all in now is leading to a beautiful 2021. And you probably would say, why do you say that, Reverend Tika? Well, because I just know that even before we come to the future, God has already been there. So Zig Ziglar says, the best is yet to come. And to summarize that, here's the final slide where it says, we may not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. And that's a beautiful destination. You know, you can be anywhere beautiful in the world, but without God in your life, you're still not happy. You're still not joyful. There's something missing in your life just because you were created by God. And without God, you cannot exist. Without Him, you cannot have that real joy, lasting joy. So I invite you to believe in this God who said, I am the light of the world. He that follows after me shall not walk in darkness, but will walk in light. He who created light is light himself. He gives light to the sun. You know, just to stare at the sun would make you blind. Now, he who created that sun is a lot brighter than the sun itself. That star called the sun is just a speck in this creator's hand. Can you believe that? Can you understand that? Can you even fathom the greatness and the majesty of this God who became man for you and for me so that we who are walking in darkness will enjoy this presence in light. A beautiful song I remember that I'd like to share with you. To give your life to Jesus is to give your all to Him. To give your life to Jesus is to give everything to Him, including your problems, your situations, the people who judge you, who condemn you, the things around you that don't satisfy you and frustrate you. I invite you this evening to offer it to the Lord. You're saying probably, Reverend Tika, I have so much worry in my hand. I have so much anxiety in my mind, stress hovers over our home because of the future in 2021. Let me offer to you that long lasting hope, which is in Jesus Christ. He is your only hope. And tonight, I'd like to invite you to give your life to Him because as the song says, it matters so little how much you may own the places you've been or the people you've known for it all comes to nothing when placed at his feet it's nothing to jesus just memories to keep only one life so soon it will pass only what's done for christ will last only one chance to do his will so give to jesus all your days it's the only life that pays when you recall you have but one life. Only one life. Give it to Jesus. Like what Jesus gave to us. He only had one life and he gave it 
to you and to me, being born in that manger, growing up as a man and giving himself up on the cross to die for all your sins and mine. Won't you accept his invitation tonight? Let's pray. Our Father, we would like to thank you for giving your Son, Jesus Christ, as a human baby, helpless as he is. But growing up, he is also God. So he created all these miracles and he made all these things possible. But he always prayed to you for help, for your will to be done. Even in that time in Gethsemane, when he prayed, not my will, but yours be done. We are in the midst of troubles, of fears, of anxiety, that we also want to submit to you everything in your hands because we know we cannot do this except we have you in our side. So we thank you for bringing down the Holy Spirit to be with us, to be in us, and to be for us. And I pray that if there is one, two, or more in this congregation, in their homes, that need to accept you as Lord and Savior, may they repent of their sins, invite you into their lives, and accept the gift of salvation, especially this Christmas season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus Christ as the light of the world. Remember that Christmas will not have any meaning without lights. You know why? Because at that first Christmas morn, when the wise men followed the star, they saw the star lighting, shining on this manger. So they saw them. So without that light, they would not have found that manger. And remember where the shepherds were there gazing at the sheep. When the angels were there, they were all mesmerized and the a bright light shone round about them. And also remember, that Christmas Eve, when Jesus Christ was born, no one saw that but God, Mary, Joseph, and some animals. But Jesus was that light right in that evening. Tonight, as we celebrate this candlelight service, I would like you and I to think that this light will be not only your light, but also Jesus' light. His light to light the darkness around your home his light to light the darkness around your life. His light to light that darkness around your businesses, your schools, your relationships, all your worries. So think about that. When we light this candle, we remember that Jesus is guiding us to light our own candles to have light around the darkness. Now, let's light the candle. I'd like to invite you in your homes to also light your candles at this time.
Just taking that one candle out into the night We'll spread the love of Jesus till there's only light Everlasting night, everlasting night Filling up the darkness with everlasting light Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for a beautiful time this evening where we will not only remember our families and friends and loved ones, but also remember that Christmas Eve where you were born. You were the light of the world and we want to follow you so that we will not walk in darkness, but enter into your marvelous light. I pray now your blessing to be upon the families here and the friends and loved ones all over the world watching this beautiful service, candlelight service. We commit to you each and every one this evening. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Now, unto Him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless to His great throne, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. You all have a Merry Christmas ahead with your families and loved ones. God bless you. As we close, I ask, is there a reason to celebrate? Is there good news to tell? Does love, hope, and faith still remain? Yes, yes, and yes, all in Jesus Christ, our Savior. As He gives us life, He also gives us purpose. My prayer is now that we know the reason for Christmas, but it doesn't end with us just knowing. Let's start doing. Let's start to live out our hope and faith by being more like Jesus. Maybe we can start by counting our blessings or by being a channel of God's love to the people around us. This Christmas, let us do as Jesus did. I wish you a merry, merry Christmas, and I pray that we would all live every day 
like it is Christmas. God bless you. Bye! Shining like the day, King of heaven, come.